One of the great challenges for churches here is how we think about that even in our local uh, situation. Uh, Michael mentioned I've been in Canberra, I'm the chair of the National Churches Gambling Task Force. Let me say that I think clubs are great, we want clubs. What I don't think is great is the pokies lobby. Yeah. I am really disturbed by what is happening in our land through the pokies lobby and you're in the belly of it here. By the way, you don't really just have clubs here, you have mini casinos here. <laughs> Five and six hundred machines. Where there's small clubs, the bowling club with a few machines, is far less problem gambling. When you have mini casinos, it's extraordinary. I'm on this because even in the developed world, we're up against gambling. Do you realise this? For every dollar a woman gets in the developed world, 90 cents flows to the kids and family. For every dollar a man gets, only 40 cents goes to the kids and family. You know why? Men gamble it or drink it. It's why we prioritise women. All our micro loans are almost always to women. You give a woman literacy numeracy in a loan, she can set up a roadside stall or a sewing machine and we know the money will flow to the kids. We also know when you empower a woman, she has the strength not to be married off to some bloke 20 years older who already has two wives because she says, I can look after myself. Disturbing the power of men having control of the money and the kids miss out is incredibly important to us. Well, I am really disturbed by the pokies lobby. I have a personal interest in this because in 1999 I convinced a person who you won't know Peter Costello, <laughs> to set up the Productivity Commission to look into gambling in this country. Now when the Productivity Commission looks into an industry, you know what it always says? More deregulation, less red tape, less intervention, more market, more competition. Think of manufacturing, think of any area. The Productivity Commission, the premier economic body, looked into gambling and it said, this is a disaster. We need more intervention. We need more control. This is a disaster. Kevin Rudd, when he was opposition leader, came out and said, I hate pokies. Uh, I'm going to ask Tim Costello to advise me. By the way, when the Productivity Commission report came out in Peter's time, John Howard said, I am ashamed. I am ashamed of gambling in this country. You may have forgotten that. But it's a state issue. So I advised Kevin Rudd to renew the Productivity Commission because it had been 10 years old. He did. Unfortunately, the report came out just a day before he was assassinated. <laughs> so that's why I didn't hear much about it. But what it said was exactly what the 1999 Productivity Commission had said. And this is massive volume of research by the Premier Economic Body. It said 40% of all the money coming from pokies comes from addicted people. 40%. That's $5 billion out of the $12 billion that Australians lose on pokies. $5 billion come from people who have, by definition, no free choice. So the Productivity Commission said, you've got to do something. Either move to machines that can only lose $120 an hour, that's called $1 bets, or if the club's hotels want their high loss machines where the average losses are $1,200 an hour, let me just ask you, how many of you prepared to pay $12, $1,200 for an hour's of entertainment? Hands up. The only reason we have these high loss machines in Australia, I'll be really blunt, is for problem gamblers. Britain, you can only play machines where you can lose $30 or $40 an hour. Because when you're playing the pokies, you're buying distraction time. You're buying a bit of pleasure. If you can buy it more cheaply, of course. The only reason we have these high loss machines is for problem gambling. The Productivity Commission said, well, the pokies lobby will go ballistic if you take away their high loss machines. That's where they get 40% of their income. It comes from addicts. So have this mandatory pre-commitment card. If you want to play these high loss machines, you've got to set your own limit before you start playing. The government doesn't know, you can set whatever limit you like, but at least you've got to think in that same moment before you lose all track of time in front of the machine,
Can I face my wife tonight if I lose more than $300? Or can I pay the mortgage and set a limit? And on those high loss machines, once you've hit your limit, you're locked out. They're all linked. It's a bit like saying, if you want to drive a car at 300k, you've got to be on a racetrack. It's not a nanny state to have a speed limit of 100k. Our cars can all go 180. In my view, it's not a nanny state to say you've got to have a card if you want to play a highly dangerous machine that most other places in the world, let me repeat this, most other countries in the world have banned these machines. And we have 200,000 of them in Australia. Now, for that concession of keeping machines, but you have to have a card, of course you've seen the campaign. Now it's a license to pump, it, and it's un-Australian, and a $40 million war chest with James Packer, and NRL, and Channel 9, everyone. This really disturbs me. And I want to finish with this because at a gathering like this, faith goes to this community point. We believe in a God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Trinitarian. I don't get the maths in Baptist Sunday School. I couldn't quite work out how three goes into one, one into three. You know, it seemed to me God got up one day and said, I've got a job to do, who'll do it? Jesus put his hand up and the Holy Spirit said, I'll come and help. That's all I really understood about Trinity. <laughs> what I now understand about Trinity is this. The very nature of God is communitarian. Father, Son and Spirit going out in mission, in surrender, in relationship, in love. That's what I understand this Trinity means. It means that if I'm made in the image of God, I am made for community. That's the fundamentally true thing. It's why the community of the globe we've been talking about, what are my responsibilities to them? What really disturbs me in the gambling debate from the pokies lobby is this, that we're going to lose community if we have reform of pokies. Well, for a start, after illicit drugs, pokies causes is the second greatest contributor of crime in the community. That might surprise you. Victorian Justice Department, huge piece of research. 70% of people in prison for drugs started with gambling problems. You might have seen this in the news re recently and were preyed on by the sharks to mind the, the harvest because the big boys weren't going to get caught because they, they go around the club, see who's in trouble and recruit them. 70% of people in jail for drag, drug convictions had gambling problems first. Secondly, we're going to lose community. Now look, we need clubs. I'm not anti-clubs. But when in New South Wales, $5 billion is brought in by pokies in New South Wales. It's $12 billion nationally. The amount of community benefit is $61 million out of $5 billion. And for that, the clubs get massive million dollar tax concessions. I say, we can deliver community benefit a lot cheaper than this. <laughs> Western Australia has no pokies outside Burswood Casino. None. None. They've said, this is a disaster, we're not doing it. Do you know, Western Australia has plenty of communities, plenty of junior sport, plenty of clubs. The highest community and sport participation in the nation is in Western Australia. Do you know where it's least? New South Wales. Wow. New South Wales. I find it deeply challenging and offensive that if we tried to reform pokies, 40% of the revenue coming from addicted people, we're going to lose community. That's the thing I find most offensive. Actually, I believe, no one club will go broke because of these reforms. Not one. And there will be greater community. And we'll be able to say we aren't simply living off addicts. 40% of the revenue.